This is episode 5 of our fascinating journey to a photorealistic real-time walkthrough in Unity using LightWave assets. So here's what we're doing. Currently we're walking around inside this um, cafe that we've created and you can look at the other videos to see exactly how we've gotten to this point. Um, we've replaced some of the textures on some of the surfaces and some of the textures still need to be done. Now We've got a few issues today that we're looking at, specifically the floor. If you'll notice when we look around here, the floor kind of um, flickers. And the simple reason for this is that our floor in the model is on the exact same level as the floor in the instant turntable system. So we're going to turn off the floor in the instant turntable system, thereby allowing us to see just the floor in the model. But that's not enough. As you'll notice, we have so many textures in here that aren't correctly assigned. So a question I've been asked repeatedly is, what could we do to prevent this so that we wouldn't have to go through it and replace all the textures by hand? And the simple answer is, put all the stupid textures in the Unity project before we import the model. As you'll recall, we had all the images in a separate folder anyway. So we just dump those into the Unity project. In this case, we already have them and then import the model. That would do it. The easiest way to make sure that all of your files import correctly in Unity with textures attached is to make sure that all the textures are in a folder that you're using in Unity before you export the file from LightWave. And the reason for that is that when you export this file and you place it in the assets folder in Unity, Unity immediately begins assigning textures and it does that based on the textures that it can find in its own asset folder. So as you can see, all I had to do was export from LightWave and the textures are automatically assigned here in Unity. That's the trick. If we have the images, if we have our textures in an images folder or textures folder or whatever you want to call it, and we're already, we already have that set up in Unity, you'll have no problem transferring your LightWave assets into Unity and having the textures transfer. That's not to say the textures will show up correctly, but at least the textures will be there. But it's not enough at this point for us to simply re-import the model, even though we have the images in there. And the reason is because the materials already exist and they're just going to be reused. Uh, Unity, what it does is it looks at the surfaces in, the, in your model and the textures that it uses and it creates, for every one of those, it creates a material. And if it finds a material that matches it already in the Unity project, it just reuses that. Well, we don't want that. What we would prefer is for Unity to start over with those, mo those materials. So we're going to delete the materials that we don't want from the, mo from the materials folder that it created. And then we're going to re-import this. Now, now, one other question that I get asked is, um, at some point down the road here, aren't we going to use the baked light maps that Unity can create? And yes, we are. So the problem here is that not all of these surfaces are UV mapped. And I don't know which ones aren't. So the first thing we're going to do is just re-import this by deleting the materials folder, and then we're just going to see which surfaces need to be fixed. That's the fastest way to do this. Now, I'm not about to turn on this feature to generate the UV maps for the light map. And the simple reason is this, and I'm going to show you this in a horrifying graphic detail at this point. Note the time, and I'm going to check this box, and I'm going to hit apply. Now look at the time. That is how long it took Unity to create all of the UV maps for the light map. Because what it does is it goes through every object and it takes all of their UV map data and it takes all of the, just a, a ton of additional information about the objects in the scene and then it piles all that into its own special UV map. And there are a few things that are wrong here and a few things that cause this massive amount of time suck. And one of them is that um, there's a ton of geometry in this in this room and there's a ton of geometry that we frankly will never need for our light map. So it's a lot smarter 
to only build the light map for the objects that you absolutely need in your scene than to, um, than to take your entire object or all of your objects and just assume that all of them are going to be needed uh, for this light map. For, for example, we'll probably not need um, our light map data for some of the chairs. We probably won't need it for some of the countertops and, and stuff like that. We will need it for the floors and the walls. But the floors and the walls are actually pretty small um, in comparison. I mean, the, the polygons are pretty small in comparison to the number of polygons just in one of these chairs, for example. So what we're going to do is wait until we've figured out which surfaces we really, really need to use in our light map before we actually use this option again.